1942. Japanese objective, Corregidor. President's order to leave, a soldier's promise to return, a soldier's hope, an appointment in Tokyo. The enemy lands on Corregidor. From Maravelis on Bataan. The Death March. itself lay open to invasion. At his Melbourne headquarters, General MacArthur faced grim facts. Against nearly 3,000 Jap planes, he had barely 500. Against Jap millions, he had 11 poorly equipped divisions. Australians, Americans. Against him were thousands of miles of Jap-infested islands and Jap-controlled seas. Against him was time and space and power and preparation. Against him was an area that made the vast United States seem small. American industry and labor were converting from the non-essentials of peace to the necessities of war. Conversion was slow, and the European theater had first call. There was little to spare for the Pacific, little to travel 10,000 miles from factory to foxhole. The longest supply line in the world, a supply line won and secured by naval victory in the Coral Sea, land victories at Guadalcanal in the Solomons. were still on the move. March 2nd, 1943. A strong enemy convoy was crawling through the Bismarck Sea. General Kenny's 5th Air Force struck with every plane he could get off the ground. Two shattered hulks. Every enemy ship. A decisive aerial victory had been gained in a critical hour. The Jap had been stopped. This was the turning point. The job of fighting back to the Philippines and beyond to Japan required the closest teamwork of sea, land, and air forces. This brought together Douglas MacArthur and Chester Nimitz. Washington had a plan. Two roads back to the Philippines. One from Hawaii, along the string of coral fortresses, the Gilberts, Marshalls, Marianas, 
to Palau. This was the job for naval and army forces under Admiral Nimitz. Another from Australia would cut through the jungle of New Guinea, up the stairway of islands to Moratai. This was the job for the army and navy forces under the soldier who had made a promise to return. reached ahead. Second, amphibious assault. Hit them where they ain't. Up from Australia and across jungle-clad New Guinea, we learned amphibious warfare and used the sea lanes for surprise until we had cut off Jap-packed Rabaul and stood on the Admiralties. By now, the Japs were dug in and ready at Wewak. So we surprised Hollandia. Wewak bypassed. Surprise, up the stairway of islands. Moratai. The GIs of the Southwest Pacific were dug in and ready for the main event. To get here, they had left a lot of Japs behind them. Box score, 152,000 dead, 160,000 bypassed. This total of 312,000 Japs had cost us 13,000 dog tags nailed to white crosses. Meantime, the forces commanded by Admiral Nimitz in Hawaii faced a different kind of war. There were no places to hit them where they ain't. Every coral atoll we invaded would have to be taken Jap by Jap. through the Central Pacific. New names in American history. Tarawa in the Gilberts. Kwajalein in the Marshalls. Saipan and Guam in the Marianas. Palau. Palau and Moratai. We had bridged the Pacific. October 44, a combat-loaded convoy from Pearl Harbor was on its way to strike the enemy stronghold at Yap. One afternoon, a top-secret code message broke radio silence. For three years, our expanding Navy and Air Forces had prowled the Pacific, cutting Jap supply lines, smashing airstrips, blasting garrisons, until Jap losses made possible a big change of plans. From Admiral Nimitz, instructions to change course. Yap invasion canceled. 
Rendezvous with task forces headed for a new objective, the Philippines. Now get this. These are the Philippines. Up at the top is Luzon, the most important island. Manila, Corregidor. The Japs are expecting us here. Down at the bottom is Mindanao, another place the Japs are expecting us. Got it? Okay. So we don't hit Luzon. We don't hit Mindanao. We hit here, right in the middle, at Leyte. Now remember, don't get careless. They're the same kind of Japs they've always been. Any questions? Questions? Sure. The silent kind. Yes, there are always questions. And the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people, and I have heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters. And I am come down to deliver them out of that land unto a good land. An army is a collection of men, and a man is a collection of needs. One of these needs is prayer, and prayer is a form of remembering. Remember? Yeah. Back in those canvas hotels in the staging area, where two can live as cheap as 2,000. Yeah, I remember. I remember Joe getting all polished up to go nowhere. What a character. Funny how the unimportant things were important. Like the first beer you had in nine months. Like Tex and his accordion. And you remember packing. Cutting down to just what you need, because what you take, you take on your back. And you remember the things you left behind. All the things you wanted to say and couldn't. And all the things you wanted to take and couldn't. Neath the western sky on the lone prairie. submarine net slipped by thinking, well, this is it. I'm on my way. We were all underway, and there wasn't much to do about it. Just sit around and wait for the Navy to take us to the Japs. October 20th, 1944. The men of MacArthur have returned.
salt waves. The untried. The veteran. The eager. The superstitious. The first to land. Some the first to fall. Captured Jap film. The enemy waits. General Yamashita commanding. HQ on a beachhead, directing the westward surge of battle. General Yamashita was determined to hold Leyte at any cost. To do this, he siphoned troops from garrisons of all neighboring islands. More captured film. Bandy-legged NIP infantrymen like these poured into Leyte. We answered the challenge with a meat grinder offensive against reinforced Jap positions. While the GI 
Allies pressed forward, grabbing ground, suddenly a new threat developed. The Jap fleet appeared, heading directly for both entrances to Leyte Gulf, moving to blast loose our toehold in the Philippines. There wasn't much ground troops could do about this threat from the rear. This was a job for the Navy. The first engagement was fought at night. On shore, everybody sweated it out, from GI to general. Our heaviest artillery was turned around toward the sea. They looked big, but against naval broadsides, they'd be like pistols against rifles. Next, our jeep carriers put the sting of death in the air east of Leyte Gulf. Jap land-based fighters and bombers reinforced their sea strength. flat tops swallowed by flames, their planes still aloft, running out of gas. Leyte's captured strips were still unfinished, wet, but not as wet as the ocean. <laughs> Meantime, east of Luzon, the third engagement. Floating wreckage and floating Japs. We had won a naval battle. Battle one, beachhead secure. But to the infantry, it was just another day to keep pushing. The speed and dash of the first days are gone. You're not front page headlines anymore. And being dry is something you've forgotten. You march in mud. You eat in mud. You rest in mud. You sleep in mud. And as long as men remember war, They'll remember mud. When you're hit, guys take care of you. You're kept alive, if it's possible. This is the battle behind battle. Courage and medicine are the weapons. Sometimes, they're not enough. This is a cathedral. 
a large church in a small town. But this is only one church of one town, of one island. And there are thousands of islands where people like these are waiting. And on these other islands, life under the Japanese is hard. We knew what Jap domination meant. Guerrillas had kept us informed. Their schools were closed and their altars destroyed their freedom gone, their harvest stolen. Death rate, American prisoners, Bilibid, increasing. American prisoners, outside, graves for the dead, inside, graves for the living. All of these people, Filipino and American, were waiting. General George Kenney's Far East Air Force was delivering bombs to Jap targets on Luzon. Anything worth hitting was hit. <laughs> Manila Bay, Luzon, the core of Jap power in the Philippines. January 4th, the largest convoy in the history of the Pacific. January 9th, 1945. This is Lingayen Gulf, Luzon. Four divisions landing abreast. We had expected a very different kind of greeting than these cheering Filipinos who told us the Japs had pulled back two days before. are gorillas. Don't let the clothes fool you. Men like these kept the war going in the Philippines long after the Japs said it was over. a ground soldier can't reach. Some targets a sky soldier can't see. So they work together. Mountains would have to be bought with battles like these. Too much, too much 
from uh, northwest, too much from northwest to southeast. directly to our rear, which is about uh, 2380 on the map. B Company is moving to F Company's present position, located on this high ground back there. They're going to pass through F Company and attack up towards the same hill, 2380. Now, can you give me a concentration on that hill? On 2380? Right. Yes, we have the 4.2 mortars, the 155, 105, and 75, all zeroed right on that hill. Right. We drop it right in there. Well, Sam, I'd like a little 81 in there, if possible, okay. you can me, and get direct fire with an assault gun. Yeah, and we'll lay it right in there. Okay, Sam, I'd like a lot of white phosphorus in there. I want to mark it well for his artillery concentration and also for a screen for these troops to move on from this direction. <laughs> up a hillside, it's slow because you've got the hill against you along with the enemy on it. It's slow going up, sometimes slower coming down. Meantime, the main force sped down the central plains. Back of enemy lines was an important human objective, Cabanatuan the prisoner of war camp. If we fail to reach these men, they'll be taken with the retreating Japs on another death march. Hand-picked guerrillas and a company of rangers started on the rescue mission, 25 miles behind enemy lines. Batan. A thousand days and nights ago, the death march began. These are the few who finished it. Today, they are free. Tuan was a grim reminder that Filipinos and Americans were waiting in Manila.
no game today. never stand still, from baseball park to business district. This is a new type of jungle for island hopping GIs, a jungle of broken buildings and smashed streets, but the same kind of Japs they've always been. Yamashita had orders from Tokyo. Hold Manila or burn it. innocent-looking piece of paper translates as follows. Japanese field order of 13 February. All Filipinos found on the battlefield will be executed. Japanese field order. Obey. Between us and the walled city was the Pasig River. And Japs. building, room to room, street to street. We brought battle to the Japs until they closed themselves behind the 14-foot thick walls of Intramuros, a fortress within a city.
The jungle didn't stop these soldiers. Neither did this wall. Back of the broken wall, broken Japs. And all around them, broken homes. Homes thousands of miles away, but American homes. Because the people who lived in them shared with us the American spirit. This is the payoff of battle, the silent reward. Many have fallen that this one may rise. This one may smile. This one may forget. This one may heal. This one may walk. This one may find a home. This one may find peace. American objective, Corregidor. The general had an appointment with the past. Corregidor, the name of a rock. But it's more than a name. The way Valley Forge and the Alamo are more than names. These men will be jumping into the middle of American history. Those that live will be saying in the years to come, I was there. I jumped on Corregidor. still emptied their human cargoes, our low-flying fighters paved the landing beaches for waterborne GIs who had crossed over from Bataan. Twelve days after we had landed on the rock, Corregidor is again an American fortress.
Supreme Commander to accept the surrender of the Japanese. He was met by Lieutenant General Eichelberger, commanding the 8th Army. <laughs> September 1st, 1945, on the battleship Missouri. And indeed the hope of all mankind that from this solemn occasion a better world shall emerge out of the blood and carnage of the past. A world founded upon faith and understanding. A world dedicated to the dignity of man and the fulfillment of his most cherished wish for freedom, tolerance, and justice. I now invite the representatives of the Emperor of Japan and the Japanese government and the Japanese Imperial General Headquarters to sign the instrument of surrender at the places indicated. Supreme Commander for the Allied Powers will now sign on behalf of all the nations at war with Japan. Will General Wainwright and General Percival step forward and accompany me while I sign? The 
representatives of the United States of America will now stand. Let us pray that peace be now restored to the world and that God will preserve it always. These proceedings are closed.